So uh, I will read. You can follow with your eyes or with your Bible. Open your iPods with uh, me or your Bible, your hard copy Bible, and maybe highlight it digitally like sometimes I would in my ESB Bible in my smartphone. And uh, very, very interesting. Okay, I think or I thought I know about this story long, long time ago when I was still in Sunday school as a young child, but digging the scriptures just did amazing things to me this um, past few weeks. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the Feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip then answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. Even a little, our money is not enough. One of the disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother said to him, Andrew Simon Peter's brother said to him, there was, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fishes. But what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sit down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, also the fish, as much as they wanted. Verse 12, And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets of fragments. From the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When then the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, Indeed, the prophet who is to come into the world. Verse 15, perceiving that they were about to come to take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. It is of prime importance that uh, we understand what the book of John is all about. Kapag ito po ay pinag-alala natin, kailangan po ay malaman natin ang kabuuan er, or the main purpose of the writing of the book. Here we have it in front of us, the main purpose of the book of John. It is to know, to understand, and to obey Jesus Christ as the promised Messiah. Now, we do know that all books in the Bible, even chapters of the Bible, even verses in the Bible, have their main purposes. If we don't know the purpose of the book of John, it is very for us to just read and read and read, even memorize verses in the Bible, pero hindi natin alam what we're reading about or what's the purpose all about. Now, the book of John, the entire book of John, and if I may include the book of 1 John, okay, you do know that he wrote five books, right? Correct me, Bobby, if I'm wrong. The book of John, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, and the book of Revelation. Itong book of John, he wrote it with the purpose of proclaiming Jesus Christ, explaining Jesus Christ to all the readers that he was indeed the promised Messiah. In the book of John, chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, we can read, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God 
and that believing ye might have life through his name. Amazing. Amazing. Now, we do know that there are at least eight miracles in the book of John. Meron pong walong himala na nasulat sa aklat ng Juan. We have uh, uh, the luxury of uh, uh, pictures over the internet that we could pluck out and put it on our PowerPoints uh, to give us some clarity, uh, visual images, na ang Panginoon ay gumawa ng eight, well more, but eight were written in the book of John. Namely, turning water into wine, John chapter 2, the healing of the nobleman's son, healing of the lame man at Bethsaida, John chapter 5, feeding of the thousands, John chapter 6, walking on water by Jesus Christ, healing of the blind man, raising of Lazarus, and his resurrection appearances. But we know from the writings of John that there are more. Mas marami pa, pero walo lang ang nakalagay sa book of John. In understanding the book of John, siguro we need to also go to other gospel writers. In the book of Matthew, he wrote primarily to describe God or Jesus Christ as the promised king. You do know that, right? Or you have to understand that. In the book of Matthew, he wrote that Jesus Christ came from the lineage of King David. Siya yung uh, great, 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 great grandson of King David. His lolo was King David. And he wrote, or Matthew wrote, about uh, the lineage of Jesus Christ, or because Matthew is very interested in that, so he wrote about that. In the book of Mark, Christ was portrayed as the suffering servant. Did you see the music a while ago about the passion of Christ? It never, uh, uh, it never failed to uh, give me uh, uh, a misty eye whenever I would see some images from the movie, uh, The Passion of Christ, The Passion of the Christ, you know? But, or sometimes it gives me a glottal stop in my throat pag nakikita ko yung mga images of the Passion of Christ. Uh, very, very uh, beautiful visual portrayal of what happened in the last days of our Lord. But here, Matthew wrote about Jesus Christ as the promised king. Mark wrote about Jesus Christ in one of the Gospels, four Gospels of the suffering servant. Luke, the historian, he was a doctor, wrote about Jesus Christ as the Son of God, man. Meaning to say, the humanity of, uh, of Jesus Christ was of prime importance in, uh, in describing his earthly ministry. And John, amazingly, wrote about Jesus Christ as the Son of God. In the study of the Bible, uh, there are four Gospels. You know that, right? Four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, but only three of them, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are called by Bible scholars um, as the Synoptic Gospels. Okay, if you're taking down notes, um, Synoptic Gospels, meaning to say uh, their stories have uh, overlapping, uh, uh, there are some scenes in the life of Jesus Christ that would overlap. Uh, Matthew would say it. Uh, uh, wrote about it and Luke would also say something about it okay uh, Luke would write about it and Mark would uh, uh, sort of say something about <coughs> that, 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 that incident as well so the three Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are called synoptic gospels did I say John? Matthew, Mark and Luke okay synoptic gospels but John is not included, the book of John is not included in what they call synoptic gospels because uh, 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 somehow the Bible scholars separated the book of John from the four. Although they are four, they are called four gospels, John is distinct <coughs> because uh, he would hardly write of the same things that Matthew wrote, that Mark wrote, 
and Luke Road. Okay? Just to give you a perspective. Kakaiba. Because the emphasis of John was on the divinity of Jesus Christ. He wrote about the miracles. He, he wrote about uh, uh, this, 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 this person who did something that only God can do. Very distinct. But just to add emphasis on our topic this morning, the feeding of the 5,000, somehow all four of them wrote about it. Okay? Lahat sila. Matthew wrote about it. Mark wrote about it. Luke wrote about it. And John wrote about it. Why was that? We would never know until we ask them uh, when we get to heaven. But maybe because of the vastness, because of the significance of the event, all of them saw it. Matthew saw it. And sabi ni Matthew, oh, this one is worth writing about. So he wrote uh, the feeding of the 5,000 in Matthew chapter 14. Mark saw it. Sabi niya, oh, this is, this is just something I would not want to miss. So Mark wrote it in Mark chapter 6. Dr. Luke, the historian, saw it. Sabi niya, this is something that I will not pass out. I'm going to write about it. And to describe Jesus Christ as the divine from the heavens, no one can do what Christ did, feeding of the 5,000 or more. John, in the book of John chapter 6, verses 1 to 15, wrote about it. Lahat po sila isinulat ito. Just to further uh, express to you the importance of this event. Is it important to you today? Maybe not. Maybe yes. But as we study this, John chapter 6, we will find out that why was it important to them and why it's important to us today. Let's try to study the book of John chapter 6, verses 1 to 15. Ang sabi ng verse 1, After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberius. The Sea of Tiberius. Um, uh, Tiberius Ti came from the word Tiberius, one of the emperors of uh, that day in honor of uh, Tiberius. There are some things that happened in the previous chapter that is worth knowing. Before I think I believe we can understand chapter 6 as Bobby would agree with me we have to understand chapter 5 first so what happened in chapter 5 of the book of John in the book of John chapter 5 verse 2 to 5 ang sabi po doon ay now there is in Jerusalem Jerusalem po is the seat or the center of religious activities in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, a pool in Aramaic called Bethsaida, which had five roof colonnades. In the picture there, beside the, beside the verse, are colonnades, meaning to say pillars, colonnades. Five roof colonnades. In this lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, paralyzed. One man was there who had been there for 38 years, invalid. Okay, so could you picture with me by the aid of the picture on our screen that somewhere in Jerusalem, the seat of anything and everything religious were congregating groups of people day in and day out they were just like, you know, uh, parking there, blind, lame, everything, maybe seeking for alms. So there was one particular person there in chapter 5, 
by a pole called Beside.